Hello everybody, and welcome to a different kind of video. This video is basically a how it's made uh, thing on my channel, where I talk about all the hardware I've used, all the software I've used to make my videos. And if you're wondering why I'm making this video, it's because I actually opened a Patreon recently, and just to start out, I added a $50 goal just to see where we stand in terms of donations. Of course, that was met like the first day, so uh, the How It's Made video was kind of the uh, goal for $50, so I'm making it. So without further ado, let's get to Actually, you know what? Something I can do in this video is since this is related to Patreon, I can show the Patreon supporter thing on the side. These are all the people who have donated or have pledged over $10 in order of most to least pledged. So that's a thing that you'll start seeing at the beginning of all of my Let's Plays in Episode 1. So I guess look forward to that. And if that interests you, you can pledge. But uh, finally getting on to the video here. Uh, so what I start, and I started YouTube in, I want to say it was 2011. And this was before I did video game stuff. I did guitar stuff and I literally just used like a $20 I think Toshiba camera, does Toshiba make cameras? I don't know. I used a $20 camera and Windows Movie Maker to edit the videos. And this was just guitar stuff. When I first got my first like capture card, it was a Dazzle and I got it for, with my Christmas money some year, I think 2012, 2013, one of those years. And I got a like $70 headset mic that wasn't actually that good. The Dazzle isn't the best either. It came with Pinnacle Studio and that's how I how I uh, edited some of my earlier videos. Obviously that was not the it's not the best quality as you can tell from those videos. Hold on. Obviously those videos don't have the highest quality so you can see why I quickly switched. I guess it was like a few years later. I got a snowball uh, to to record my audio, and that was when my I believe my video started getting a little bit better. This was at the end of uh, Chrono Trigger, and I believe the first Let's Play I did with it was Adventure Time. Maybe I don't even remember. Jeez, but at this point, I'm also using Bandicam to record things on my computer because it offers a much higher quality than a Dazzle does. And moving on from that, I am now currently using a Yeti because my snowball petered out a few months ago. And I still use Bandicam, but I use an Elgato for anything that's on console, usually Wii U. And I also have a 3DS capture card, which you can look up. Like, I think it's just literally 3D ca 3dscapture.com or something like that. It costs a pretty penny, but it's nice to have. Because uh, you can play a ton of games with it. Now including SNES games, because they finally added that to Virtual Console. Now we just have to wait for GameCube. Which may or may not happen. Who knows. Anyway, getting on to how I actually record videos. So, you can see my whole screen here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna show everything or block some stuff out, but this is my screen. I have Audacity running, Bandicam running. Yeah, I use Audacity to record my audio. Uh, I use Sony Vegas to, uh, to edit videos now. And it's Pro 11, which is an older, an older kind because I don't want to pay a lot of money. And basically what I'll do is uh, Bandicam records videos in a I think MP4 format, which doesn't actually work for Sony Vegas, so I have to convert them to Windows Movie Maker video. Windows Movie Video, I think it's just called, because if it's not, it'll... It's an AVI. It, uh, Bandicam can't use AVI. However, what is this? Windows Media File. Uh, so I'll open that. This is the last episode of... Uh, galactic journey if you're wondering so I have that first thing I do go to properties disable resample and to show you what this does I believe if I go to draft 
Uh, will it show it? No. What if I go to just like best? Yes, you can see it. You can see how the frame kind of splits if the video isn't running at a perfect 30 frames per second. So you can see like t doubles of everything. I hate that. First thing you want to do, go to properties, disable resample, and that gets rid of that completely. That's one of the best upgrades to quality you can do when editing a video. I swear to God, it's the best. Next, of course, I'll open up like, uh, what do we got? In my documents, I keep all my audio. So let's say I'll get Galactic Final, put it, just smash it right on there. Boom, there's that. And I think I actually haven't edited this episode before, so I'm probably gonna keep this all um, for later. So that'll come up after rendering. Uh, I always hit the mic really hard when I start a recording, or I hit the button to record on Bandicam really hard to start recording so I can hear it in the audio. And so I can just line those up and boom, it's done. Cut off any excess from the beginning and boom, if I could get it over, you have video and audio. Make sure it's all the way to the left. Yeah, because sometimes it doesn't clip all the way. And then I just open a background which would be in my downloads. Uh, say I wanted to use this background, just put it there, put it on a different timeline, and extend it through the entire video. Kaboom, it's there. Now I can put it at the bottom because it's the least important thing. Now I have audio balancing. Usually I want to keep this, the audio of the video itself, down to about negative 25 decibels and for myself I like you want it to be as close to zero decibels as you can get it so as you can see not sure if you can hear it but as you can see uh, this is hovering around 23 22 I'm gonna turn it down just a tiny bit and this one is getting close to zero but not quite so that's right where I want it to be Actually, hopefully you can't hear it because then it'd be overtaking my voice. So after I've done that, I watch through the entire video. Uh, if I happen to peak at any point, which this part I obviously do, as you can see, it goes to 4.6. That makes the audio sound absolutely disgusting. So I'll just turn it down at least 4.6 and call it good. Then of course there's parts where I cut. I want to cut that out so uh, say here I'll start here and cut I'm not sure if that's actually a part I wanted to keep in because sometimes I do cut out sometimes I do make noises I'm thinking I didn't want to cut those in so get rid of all of that and then move this over and just with Sony Vegas, you can just like pull them over each other and it automatically does a crossfade, so that's pretty sweet. Makes things a lot easier for me. Of course, if I wanted to do an actual transition, I could line these up so they don't fall out of sync. And I usually do about 14 frames for, for a crossover. Uh, this number here, 0.14, is 14 frames. And whenever it says one, that's one second, which is 30 frames. So once you get to 30, as I'll show, boom, it goes to one because it's a second. It's a little weird to get used to, but because like you automatically think, oh, it's 60 seconds. No, it's 30 frames, at least with what I, what I do, because I don't really see a reason to do 60 frames a second in videos that I do. Uh, but that pretty much covers like how I edit. If I have to, I'll just put in like something over the top, make a meme or something, you know. Uh, I have video effects here. I can make them black or white, do whatever. Uh, media generators, this is where I have all the lettering that I use. Titles and text, what do we got? Text on screen bra and text on screen bra shadow, if I want to be really cool. And then I have various other saved things for other uh, other projects like you remember the crash counter uh, you remember paper Mar the paper Mario things that popped up out of the bottom the death counter for Kaizo Mario uh, the, what I use for putting music over stuff so just to give an example 
Well, I guess I should have put this on its own thing. Just to give an example. So say I wanted to put this here and put some music. I can change it to whatever I want, move it wherever I want on the screen, even though it's going at like two frames a second because I have it on best. Just move it wherever you want and boom, it's there. And it'll show up in that part of the video. Except if you like highlight a certain part. So now, boom, there it is. Look at that, magic. This is very basic. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you probably haven't edited videos before, I guess, is what I'm trying to think of. And then at the end, I'll add in the end, uh, the end screen. I'll just add another track and find that wherever it might be. Which should be right about here. I think my dog is tearing through toilet paper. Give me a second. I have no idea what Dude was doing back there. Yes, my dog's name is Dude. Anyway, what I'll do here is I'll trim off the end because anything past this little triangle here is actually, uh, like, it'll repeat the video from the beginning audio-wise and the video will just go black. So, what I want to do is have like two or three seconds at the end of this. So I'll cut everything there and then run this over it at like 14, 18, somewhere within that range. And I'll put the, mu uh, the music down to like that because that's about a good, a good thing. And that'll play and I add in all of the videos and stuff uh, when it's uploaded to YouTube because that's actually a YouTube thing. And I don't know what he's whining about. Dogs. Okay. I guess he wanted outside. I don't know. So anyway, after that, the video takes, like, okay, if I can go to File, Render As, and the... how do I show this? Customize Template. These are all the, like, settings I have it as to make it fairly good. I have it set to 720p. I tried 1080p. I think it works. I think it actually makes it 1080 because, you know, it's a lot of settings I have to mess around with. Sometimes it doesn't work. It, I think it works, but I don't use 1080 because that's a f huge file size and it would take like four hours to render or something. Right now, like, my videos that I usually make all take, like, an upwards of two hours to render. If you're wondering how long that takes. And I think that's basically it. That's, like, everything that goes into making a video, and I can't close this because the Bandicam thing's actually covering the X button. Maybe if I sneak it in there? Nope, okay. Well, if you were wondering how I made my videos, that's how. So... I guess there you go, and goodbye.